Hello, we're here today uh, doing our little Marita 2021 New Year's hello message. And I'm with uh, the legendary Gundry Tadal, uh, who barely needs any introduction because she is one of the most successful mountain bikers and cyclists of all time. Uh, Olympic gold medalist, 10 world champions to your name, uh, more race wins than I care to count. Uh, so uh, hello, hello Gunrita, how are you? Hello, thank you, nice intro. I'm fine, thank you, for right. the circumstances to put it that way. Yes, it could, it could always be worse. Uh, very, yeah. a very, a very, a very strange year, but uh, now, now we're behind it. Yeah, I'll, I'll move on to our little quick questions for you. So, um, how exactly did you uh, did you see out 2020, and uh, and see in 2021? Yeah, it's uh, it is strange to look back and. Um, I think in Norway, we have had it special compared to a lot of, of other countries because we, we closed down early and we didn't have a, a really pandemic in Norway. Uh, we have, of course, also rules, but we were never locked inside like a lot of other countries. So in many ways, we still felt like we had the freedom. We just had to be more careful and, and, and behave safer in another way. And then, of course, you had all these people being lost work and and things like that but um but we we had a strange year anyway like most other people but um, yeah. at the same time we we I, I think we have been really lucky uh when we try to imagine how many people had it being locked inside for many months that's hard for a Norwegian to 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 kind of put themselves into what were the kind of positives that you took from from the experience of 2020? I, I think um, a lot of people in Norway, they uh, were more active, um, both with and without the, the cyclists, but they were felt like that people have been more outdoor, uh, walking, hiking, cycling, and also big change in how we did our holidays, for sure. Yeah. Uh, discover more of Norway uh, and I think a lot of Norwegian will think like that also for the 221 um, even though things will start to get back to normal uh, perhaps end of, of 21 but uh, I think a lot of Norway already still think that okay we, we do our holiday in Norway also for the next year and we don't book and plan a lot of other things to go abroad um, and I, I think that's in many ways, it's good. Why not discover a beautiful country that we already live in and, and, and take precaution of, of the situation we are actually living in? Uh, for myself, it has been strange because like my daily work is to uh, educate kids for cycling and, and behaving right in traffic, staying safe in the traffic. And a lot of these things got canceled, of course. We couldn't have a lot of kids gathering in uh, small places, but I had some. But I managed to work on other things that hopefully will have uh, like a lot of uh, good things to come up now in 2021. Um, more, uh, more out to school to do um, teaching in, in cycling and, and also the traffic uh, behavior. So um, we got to do a lot of work that we not normally would have time to. So if you put it that way, that could be something positive for the coming year. So what, what are you looking forward to in 2021, assuming, assuming we get a little bit more freedom? I really hope that there can be some of the big bike festival around in, in Europe that can come back to normal or close to normal again. I think all the experience we have with arranging things, uh, this thing with how to keep distance, uh, behave, anti-back, washing your hands and these things, maybe and hopefully we get back to some of the bike festival where maybe less people than normal, but at least we can have it and, and be out there. Uh, that's probably what I miss most of all for the season we had. Uh, it has been good, of course, to be home uh, after so many years on the road before I retired. But at the same time, I really miss this big festival, be out there and meet other uh, cyclists that, that love cycling on their own level and 
not not the racing typical, but just be out there among other cyclists. I miss that part. So I guess this is this is a bit related to what we just spoke about. But what are your sort of cycling ambitions for twenty twenty one? Is it uh, do you have any plans in mind for like a big trip or you know is there a race that ideally if it comes together you'd really like to do or you know is it just you know yeah a really big ride that you'd enjoy that you're kind of planning on doing? Yeah, I I I think as I did the last two years will be part of the. Arctic race um, on the road as an ambassador, as well as the Sky the Extreme up north of Norway that has been race I've been involved with uh, the last two seasons. Um, we got to do actually Sky the Extreme also in 2020. So that was one of the few one we managed to do. A fantastic experience, but as retired, we need new challenges. So uh, uh, we actually signed in to do the big Grand Fondo Trondheim Oslo this summer. Wow. So that will be something I'm not really convinced I will manage to finish, but I will at least go for the challenge and we will see how, how far I get. Wow, I don't think it's in doubt whether you'll complete it really, really. I think you're being modest. <laughs> It's a long race and it's, uh, I think it's not really the mind that doesn't matter, but being on a bike for 540 Ks, that's painful. Not yeah. not exhausting in the same way as you're racing, Max. It's more the exhausting of fear, having pain here and there. I think that will be the biggest challenge. Yeah, just overcoming that for such, such a long time. And yeah, yeah all, like all. you start to have a painful knee after halfway um how can you finish then or just sitting is a pain pain in the ass <laughs> after halfway then i don't know so i think that will be more the, the toughest challenge actually like you will have big pains after that uh, some of that uh, case done and then will that stop you to finish we will see time will show yeah I have every confidence. <laughs> uh, I guess that, that neatly brings up to the last question, uh, which is, uh, which bike did you ride most last year and which one do you think you'll spend the most time on this year? Um, I think if, I think I have been a little bit more on my 120, I think, uh, but also close that we also have, a lot of time I use my mission to work because yeah. there I have fenders and uh, lights on and, and that's what we need when you ride in the morning at six o'clock and it's almost dark when you go back again. Um, I've been a little bit on my, my e-bike, the 160, uh, and I also have my sea legs that I've been a little bit on together with uh -huh. my, my son because he also has a sea legs. Uh -huh. uh, but I think I'm really excited to, to get testing the new 96. Uh, so I guess that will might be the favorite bike for next year. We will see. It depends also what kind of festivals and kind of event we, we get to go to. Uh, but for the Trondheim Oslo, it will be interesting now to really test out in a tough way, to put it that way, the new Skultura Endurance. Yeah. So that will be, uh, be a bike we probably spend a lot of time on also in the preparation, of course. Yeah, I guess there'll certainly be quite a lot of distance on that one just in one go. Yeah, <laughs> I think I should do some long distance ride before I start in, in Trondheim, I guess. Yeah. It will be a big advantage at, uh, at least. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to chat to us and uh, I wish you a very jolly uh, 2021. Right, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. To all of you, good and fit and rolling good uh, 2021 to all of you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.